Good morning, everyone. So it is Sunday morning, and Juan Carlos, myself, and his mama are getting ready to head out, and we're going to the Ferreria de Café, which is a national coffee festival that is held here annually. And we've been to it for a couple years, and we're excited to bring you along with us. We're starting our day out early with some homemade French toast, yummy, 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 and of course some coffee. So come along with us as we adventure out into coffee world. it to the town of Frailes here for the Ferreria de Cafe. We just parked our car. Si, si, musica. Greetings everyone from Frailes, see? Frailes, Costa Rica, uh, which is about a 45 minute drive from us in Cartago up through the mountains. And we are here at the Ferreria de Café, which is the coffee festival. And they are celebrating the 15th year this year of this festival. And it gets larger and larger every year. It used to be just two days and now they've expanded it to five days. Uh, we're here on Sunday, which is the final day. They've got all kinds of great stuff going on here today. They've got cultural dances, interesting things about Costa Rica. They've got artisans here. And of course, the main reason we're here is for the coffee, folks. Lots and lots of local farmers are displaying their different coffees from here, and we're going to check it out. So you guys get to come along with us. Welcome to... Feria del Café. Feria del Café. Sí. <laughs> all right. Come along with us, everyone, as we have a great day. All right, folks, so I'm standing here, and directly behind me is the area where they do entertainment. And throughout the entire day here, they have these amazing cultural events happening, cultural dances. Right now, we've got a group of children out behind us, which is awesome. And we had a group of ladies before that doing some cultural dances. So we're going to show you some footage of these wonderful dances that are presented here in Costa Rica at the Ferreria de Café. <laughs> goes out throughout the entire day here at the festival, all kinds of entertainment. Okay, so this particular room that I'm in right now, this is the area where all of the different coffee farmers have their coffees displayed. And there are probably, I'd say about 20 different farms represented here in this building. So we're going to go check out all of the different coffees. And the great thing about it is they, get, they give you tastes and samples. Yeah. So we're going to get our coffee on. Yeah. Uh, let's start right over here. 
at Cafe Chirpo. As an interesting fact, the name of this coffee, Cafe Chirpo, it's um, after our highest mountain here in Costa Rica. It's called Monte Chirpo, and that's where that name comes from. Cafe Chirpo. All right, we're gonna try the little Chirpo. How's it smell, Wonky? It's very smooth. It's got just the right amount of acidity. It's good. Yeah. 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 Right? Si, si, rico. Bueno, bueno. This is good. Try charipo. If you're in Costa Rica. <laughs> See? It's very Costa Rica. <laughs> Yes, the highest mountain. The highest mountain, right. Should we put the highest mountain in Costa Rica? Yeah. That's yeah. A, the highest mountain in the whole re region of South America. Okay. Costa Rica. Just the highest. Oh, okay. It's about 3,300 meters yeah. over the uh, sea. So that's the highest. Very cool. So you learned really it here, cool. folks. Really awesome. Cool. Salud. I'm going to try some of this. All right, so we're here at Cafe de Valle. We're going to try their coffee, let you know what we think. And again, another very smooth coffee from here in Costa Rica. Not bitter, not a lot of acid. It's very smooth, and you really don't need any cream or sugar, which is a great thing. Very good. Check out Cafe de Valle. Uh, the Cafe Valle is from the southern region of Costa Rica, which is a little different than the first one we looked at, which was from the highest mountain of Costa Rica. So let's go check out what we can find next. What we have going on here right now is they're actually roasting the beans in this machine. We're getting some nice roasted coffee. And we're doing that from Santos, Santos Coffee. And at this booth, instead of tasting the coffee, they're actually roasting it so you get the aroma of the coffee here at Cafe Santos. So we're now in the uh, Coffee Diversa Cafe, we're gonna try there. Interesting taste. Uh, this particular coffee has won 2016, 17, and 18 awards at the Paris Coffee Festival, which is one of the largest international coffee festivals in the world. So they show very well. And they got some really beautiful merchandise here, some nice coffee brewers. What are you looking at, Juan Carlos? Yeah. They it's a nice uh, coffee brewers. Yeah. And my mom is asking for that one. So how to use it. Ah. Mama's learning. Beautiful, beautiful coffee roaster here. It's gorgeous. So for people traveling, this particular little box of coffee is really great. This little piece here comes pre-filled, comes inside this box, and you can take it with you anywhere you are in the world. It would fit very well in your luggage, and you have coffee. Pretty awesome. Okay, so we're now here at Cafe La Cumbre, which is from the Terra Azul region of Costa Rica. And they do two types of coffee. They do a natural coffee, which they dry in the sun, all natural, and then they do a processed honey roasting of their coffee, and that's what I'm gonna try right now. This is the honey flavor. Uh, it's very smooth, the honey roast. Um, I like it. So, yeah. The La Cumbre honey roast is actually very good, very tasty, I like it. So that's honey. This yep, is this is honey. This is the natural. So now I'm going to try the natural. It's more fruity. And this is a little more fruity? Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely got a little more of a, it's a little more bitter, a little more acidic than the, uh, the honey. Honey's much smoother. Very good. Okay, so the name of this machine is Chancadora de Café. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, 
right? So this is pretty much a pillar. It divides the bean from the external part, the skin. Yeah. So after this, they just dry the coffee and the sun. Yes, this is, is a man. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so this is, it will be a hand process where they select the coffee from the good seeds, from the bad seeds. You know, if it's still too moist or it cuts any defects, they will, um, you know, select the coffee. It's a manual process. Well, the place that we just had uh, the explanation from was Frey Cafe. Uh, the lady was very nice to explain to Juan Carlos the process of peeling, drying, and then sorting. Uh, and now we're at their booth, which is right here. Uh, this is their particular coffee. Do we know where they're from? What region? Uh, Frey Cafe. We're gonna find out. Let's go find I out where they're from. Yes, they are from here because well, of the name. Fry. Yeah, I know they're from Costa Rica. But... No, no, I'm, I'm talking about here, Frailes. This oh, town. Oh, Frailes. Because Fry Cafe, Frailes. We're thinking that they might be from the actual town that where the festival's in, Frailes. So we're gonna go find out. Come along with us. So we did discover the Fry Cafe is from Frailes, which is the area where this festival is. So this is local to this region of Costa Rica. Pretty cool. So now we're in the Fadiva coffee booth. Uh, this is from the Terra Zoo region. Some of the best coffees in the world grow on the sides of volcano. And it has a lot to do with the volcanic ash and the soil that really gives coffee its amazing flavor. So the Terra Zoo brands of coffee that grow here in Costa Rica have a particularly great flavor to them. Fadiva has many different coffee flavors that they offer from the Terra Zoo region. Here's several of them. Red honey seems to be very popular as well as yellow honey. I'm not sure, what does that mean, wonky? Okay. Caracolillo? Ah, caracolillo is the, uh, uh, the, the seed that we like, the pea... Oh, pea berry. The pea berry, yeah. So, okay, so caracolillo means pea berry, which is a very high-end bean of coffee, the best. One of the unique things here at Fadiva is they actually make a coffee-flavored butter, or mantequilla de café. I'm gonna try it. Juan Carlos is showing us the container. Wow, it's really good. I like it. Yeah. It's sweet. Yeah, it's sweet. It'd be really good to spread on bread. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really yeah. yummy. Yeah. Should we get some of that? Yeah, we will. We're going to buy some of this. This is really good. Yummy. We also just tried what Juan Carlos is holding in his hand, uh, which is a sort of a coffee liquor, similar to a Bailey's or an Irish cream, uh, crema de cafe, and it's really, really yummy. Does that have alcohol in it, yeah? 10%. Oh, 10% alcohol, so it's good and strong. 100% Tico. Yeah, it's good. So yeah, we definitely like that, and we like this butter. Okay, so we just finished tasting coffees from all of the different uh, vendors here, and now directly behind us is Leo Segeco, which is our favorite coffee. Juan Carlos and I discovered this coffee about almost four years ago. Actually, I discovered it before you did. Oh, now like, he's telling like me. One or two years before. Okay, so Juan Carlos has known about this coffee for about six years. I've only known it before. Uh -huh. uh, but this is the home of Mantecope, which has been ranked as the number one coffee in the world several years. And uh, it is by far the best coffee I've ever had in my life. Yeah, it's and, really good. Yeah, it's very, very good. Not to say all of these other coffees aren't great. No, these, uh, are, these are fantastic. Because all of these coffees here that were displayed today are fantastic. We just happen to be particular to this one because we fell in love with it several years ago. And uh, many of you watching this video, if you're family and friends, we've brought you bags of it. So guess what? You're lucky again because we're going to buy some more. Mm -hmm. uh, it's now available in the United States too. People can order it yeah, online. Yeah, can order it online. Uh, which is great. Uh, we'll give you a link down below so you can do that. Uh, but come along with us and we're going to go to check out, see if they've got anything new and interesting here. Oh.
All right, everyone, so this is pea berry and the Monte Cope. And if you look at a bag or you're ever looking at any coffee, you want to look for the label that says True Origin, which means it's a single source coffee, single bean, it's not a blend, and it's original. And this is considered the best coffee in the world. So we are buying eight bags of ground and six bags of whole bean. And of course, yes, we are buying the pea berry. So yeah, so we're getting our Monte Cope. Um, in this particular bag, they have a special uh, that they made just for the festival for 2019. There's only 100 bags of this available in the world. So we're gonna try it. We'll see if we're gonna... Yep, I think we're gonna get take some of this home with us as well. It's very good. It's reminiscent of the Monte Cope pea berry, but it's got a little hint of uh, maybe a little extra fruit. So. It's like a little extra fruity than the Monte Cope pea berry. Like a little sweeter. Yes. Sweet. Yes. Like that. This is the difference. See, see. See? Can you taste the sweetness? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dos. Gran. 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 No. Molino. Molido. 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 Gran. Gran. Yay. Yeah. So, yep, we have a lot of coffee for the next year. I'm going to prepare you a gift. It's the same coffee. Oh, gracias. I don't know if you want any brown or whole wheat. Brown. Brown. And she's given us a gift, too. Because we're special. Because we're big, <laughs> big buyers. Yeah, we buy a lot of their coffee. Yeah, every every year they give us something because yeah. we buy a lot. They remember us. They do. Which is nice. It is nice. They do remember us. We still want to visit the farm, but we haven't had a chance yet. So right. one day we'll take you with us and we'll go to their farm. <laughs> but in the meantime, if you ever get a chance, try Monte Cope. Right? Yeah. And we're having our coffee ground right now. The special edition. Just for Juan Carlos and I. And as they say, life's too short, drink coffee. Ahora sí, ya casi está por eso, porque le sacamos, le sacamos lo amargo a la hora que lo quemamos. Entonces, para, para seguirle con eso, yo le recomiendo, hervimos el agua. Después de eso, le abrimos la tapita o, o si es en gas o... que ahora van a tener algunas consultas, lo van a ver directamente con ellos. ¿Está bien? Ya casi viene la sorpresa. All right. So we're going to try this coffee and this is the locally grown coffee. Juan Carlos is going first. We just finished listening to Glenn, who again is the president of the National Barista Association here in Costa Rica. And Juan Carlos and I learned a lot of interesting things that we want to share with you in the presentation. So one of the first things we learned as he was pouring the coffee in the two different uh, bins, the filters that he had that he was using, one of the things he did is he actually poured the hot water over the filters before putting any coffee. We asked him why he did that, and the answer makes a lot of sense. The, the filters that we all use for our coffee definitely have flavor of paper and impurities and things like that. So by pouring hot water over them first, you remove all of that, and then you put your coffee in, which gives you a more pure taste. So that was a great bit of advice, so we learned that. Uh, secondly, Juan Carlos asked about sugar and the use of sugar, and, and his specific question was whether you could mix the sugar in with your coffee before you brew it, or is it better to do it after? And the answer from the barista was basically, it's your choice, but you definitely do get a different flavor coffee. So we're gonna try that at home because we've never mixed the sugar yeah. first. We never did it. And then um, I'm gonna put a little clip here of the two different types of um, 
basically brewing that he was doing. He was using a ceramic pot and he was also using a glass pot. And he would put the same exact amount of coffee in each one, brew them, but the taste would be different. And we discovered that the taste from the glass pot gave a much more smooth taste to the coffee and the taste in the ceramic pot um, was a little more um, robust. Yeah, robust, a little more um, bitter, but not in a bad way. Um, and it's not because of the materials, it's not because it was glass or because it was um, ceramic. Uh, basically, the glass decanter he was using acts more like a decanter that you would use for wine. So it lets it breathe, it lets the coffee breathe, which makes it smoother, versus the other one that uh, keeps all of the flavor in the pot and doesn't necessarily let it breathe as much, so you get that more robust taste. Mm -hmm. We actually preferred... The glass. Yeah, we like the glass, so we think we're gonna purchase one of those, because um, it really gave a nice, smooth taste to our coffee. What else did we learn? The milk. Yeah, so Juan Carlos asked, why don't you tell them what you asked about the milk? Yeah, so I asked about um, what milk would be better to use, like right. whole milk, 2%, or your skinny milk, sure. And same, same question, uh, same answer. It was like, well, it all comes to you. What do you prefer? Right. Are you uh, lactose intolerant? Correct. If you're lactose intolerant. So he, he talked about the different kinds of milks that we can find here in Costa Rica. Yeah. Without saying any brands, but sure. the, the, the yeah, yeah it's is pretty much we get the same all around the world. Like the zero percent, two percent whole milk lactose free yeah. and now of course we have all of the different ones like soy yeah. almond and that's all based on your taste yeah so he, and also i asked if it's better to boil or warm up the milk before mixing the milk with, right. the, with the coffee or is, if it's better to use the milk like just um, cold milk. cold right and he said again whatever you prefer I, he said i have customers who said that please boil the milk first right. and some some are like just bring me the milk as it is from the fridge so again that's all to your personal taste and he did mention that obviously if you use the cold milk it's going to change the temperature of your coffee quickly so if you're somebody who likes hot coffee probably. same with the, with the consistency like a whole milk it's going to give like more rubbers yeah because yeah. it's more more fat in that meal right. versus more Zero. liquid yeah, that yeah. is going to be more just yeah. So the bottom line is with regard to milk and sugar, it all depends on your personal taste. So, But there is definitely a difference in how you brew the coffee and the flavor. That was fascinating to me. So anyway, we're going to go continue exploring and we'll bring you more shortly. So now we're going to check out all of the different artisans that are selling their wares here. Right here you can buy this is the traditional brewing for coffee. This is uh, very traditional from the old carts that they used to use to carry the coffee beans from the farms. These baskets or canastos are representative of the baskets that are used on the farms to pick the coffee. See them the honey like perfect. It's again a coffee brewer. Yeah. Grind the coffee. I'm grinding some coffee here. Carlos is trying some cherry tomato spread. Very, very good. So many good things here at this festival. Coffee, little treats, artisanal breads, great entertainment. We're gonna go have lunch in a minute too, and I bet the food is gonna be amazing.
Ah, bueno, no. Hey everyone, that wraps up our day here at Feria de Cafe. And Juan Carlos and I and his mama, we had a great day. There's mama, sneak it in here. Hola mama. <laughs> so overall we had a great day, yes. We're very excited, we got Monte Cope, as always, we picked that up. We had great entertainment, yes. music is great, food is great, it is great. the coffee is great. It's very crowded, so we're gonna head home. Uh, but we actually had a wonderful day here. So until next time, as we always say, happiness is a lifestyle. Thank you for watching, everybody. Uh, please hit that thumbs up, give us a little comment below, subscribe to the channel, and uh, please share the video with your friends if you like it. Until next time, everybody, peace out. Ciao, bye. <laughs>